Hey man, what's going on man? This your boy Kagi SMG back with another video man and today you can tell by the thumbnail, you can tell by the title exactly what's going on man. We discussing Marvel Spider-Man 3 will be game of the year. It just has to be bruh. If you've been watching our discussion videos about Marvel Spider-Man 2, you know this video was coming. Although it took a little longer than expected, I wanted to wait until after this year's game awards to see if there were any announcements regarding the game or DLC. Unfortunately, there wasn't. <laughs> It was also very unfortunate that Marvel Spider-Man 2 didn't win a single award. But Insomniac still has a chance with Marvel's Wolverine and of course the inevitable Spider-Man 3. So let's get into this. If you haven't seen our previous two videos where we discussed what could come before Spider-Man 3, I suggest you go watch those videos first. Before a quick recap, I hope we get three DLC episodes. Kraven's Family, Daredevil, Carnage, or maybe a Venom DLC. Since there are still unused voice lines out there and the Venom voice actor Tony Todd teased more to come. Then after that, I think we should get a Silk spinoff game. If you want more details on how I think her game should be, be, go watch our video. But now, if we get all of that, the next project should definitely be Spider-Man 3. So let's begin. I think Spider-Man 3 should feel like the most different game out of the trilogy. I chose the word different because I feel like we're going to be getting a different Peter this time around. At the end of Spider-Man 2, we see Miles taking the role of Spider-Man while Peter steps back to relax and bust down MJ. So the Peter we see in Spider-Man 3 might not be the Peter we're used to. It would be interesting to see Peter kind of struggle getting back into the role of Spider-Man or trying not to be in the role of Spider-Man and just be Peter. I can definitely see him ready to go save the day but sees Miles get the job done and he has to kind of take a step back. But a certain villain that we'll talk about soon will definitely make him suit up again. But before we get into that, let's talk about where and how the game can start compared to other titles. Previous Spider-Man games always started with a big battle. In Spider-Man 1, Peter raced to Fisk Tower to take down Kingpin. And in Spider-Man 2, Pete and Miles took on the freaking Sandman. But I think in Spider-Man 3, we will get something a little more calm. What if it starts out in Aunt May's house, maybe Peter is sleeping, but then we hear MJ screaming in terror and we see Peter wake up to save the day and help her, but when he finds her, she was only screaming because their daughter is crawling on his ceiling and about to fall. I feel like that would be hilarious, man. And it would be a way to show what Pete and MJ have been up to since the events of the second game. It would probably play out similar to what happened in the second game when Harry first appeared. Ah! MJ! And to make this feel more fleshed out, hopefully if we get DLC, we can get updates on their relationship status as far as marriage because, you know, during that fine grandpa side mission, Peter was very interested in how grandpa proposed. Perhaps he is planning on popping the question himself. I have to ask. How do you propose? But anyway, I think the game could start with the calm before the storm approach. Updates on our heroes, Pete and MJ are married now with a child, Miles and Cindy are maybe in the same college, stuff like that. That's when the storm comes in. I think a major death at the beginning of the game would be crazy. Similar to 2020's game of the year, The Last of Us Part 2. Now who would that character be though? Could be Rio Morales, Wraith, or maybe even MJ. It would have to be somebody a part of the spider team since that would cause more of an impact. MJ, Rio, Genki, Haley, and most likely Cindy all know both Spider-Man's real identities. Uncle Aaron knows Miles, and I'm pretty sure Rafe doesn't know, but low-key, it would be pretty cool if she could find out. But that being said, there is a certain individual who is trying to figure out who the Spider-Man are, and there's another certain individual who knows. So with that, let's get into the villains we could see in Spider-Man 3. Norman Osborn. Now the reason I say Norman and not Green Goblin is because I think that just Norman will have so much more development that we could see before he eventually turns into the Green Goblin. I mean, we're already seeing it. The smug, rich guy Norman from the first game is nowhere to be seen in the second game. The second game, we see a broken man worried for his son. And at the end of that game, we see him break down completely. <laughs> So I think before he finally turns into the Green Goblin, maybe we can see him do some villainous acts as just Norman. Maybe if he finds out who the Spider-Men are, he can track down their loved ones. He will start to ruin their lives leading to the major death that I mentioned earlier. This would definitely make Peter suit back up as he probably thinks it's his responsibility and maybe even his fault for leaving Harry in the condition he is in. Now let's talk about Norman's Green Goblin side. At the end of Spider-Man 2, we hear Norman ask for the G serum. This is almost 100% the Green Goblin serum. The only thing, it seems that he is wanting the serum to save Harry. It will be devastating if the serum actually kills hair. That would be the final straw for Norman. He would probably try to use the serum on himself to die as well, but instead of kicking the bucket, he turns into the Green Goblin. I think this would be crazy. I could definitely see this being one of the best Green Goblin adaptations if done right. And while I would love to see the green suit and glider, I think there should be more. I hope Green Goblin will have different stages, transformations as the serum spreads throughout his body. Starting out as the Green Goblin that most people know, but then evolving into the ultimate Green Goblin. But wait, there's more. Imagine this. After getting into multiple 
scuffles with the Spider-Man, Green Goblin is finally defeated and about to be saved by a cure created by the spider team. But suddenly, the madman known as Cletus Cassidy, better known as Carnage, makes his appearance, bonding with Norman, creating the Red Goblin. I've been teasing this villain in our previous discussion videos as the main big bad for Spider-Man 3. And I think the Spider-Man, or I guess we should say Spider-Team of Silk is included, will have many boss fights with different versions of the Goblin, with the Red Goblin being the finale. Now, I'm about to take some plots directly from the comments that can back this up and involves all the spider people we could see in the third game. After Norman Osborn bonded himself to the Carnage symbiote becoming the Red Goblin, he heavily injured Peter, making Peter contact Cindy and instructing her to watch over his loved ones. After Red Goblin wounded Human Torch in class, she along with Miles tried to fight him. However, Red Goblin made quick work of them and left them with intense damage. Then Flash Thompson as Anti-Venom arrived to fight Norman, but was forced to keep the fallen heroes from dying while Red Goblin injured Flash. After Flash took them to the hospital, he used his symbiote to remove the symbiote pieces left in their bodies from Norman who intended to use them to kill Peter's loved ones. That all happened in the comics and can literally be adapted in the game, almost one to one. And with the Baxter building now being in New York, the whole Human Torch bit could still happen. I should note that the game creator said if Spider-Man 2 was our Civil War, then the next game would be our end game. So I'm expecting to actually see other heroes in New York rather than just Easter eggs. But let's talk about the anti-venom problem. Flash Thompson does exist in this universe, so he could appear and become anti-venom, but how would that happen if Peter still has the anti-venom in him? Obviously, Pete could probably just give it to him, but I think it should be an entirely different person who gets the symbiote. I think it should be Eddie Brock. Now you might think it would be too much to introduce a new character and make him Venom. But if you think about it, Insomniac already did that with Harry. While Harry isn't a new character, he wasn't fully introduced until the second game and we saw him fight his agent Venom, big boy Venom, hell he even grew wings. So I think Eddie could be introduced in the same manner, but instead of him being a villain, he could be a big player in the fight to stop Red Goblin. This would mean more playable Venom and it was already teased. Like I said earlier, Venom voice actor Tony Todd said that there's a lot of unused voice lines. I think he also said that there's another project in the works for 2024 leading fans into thinking it was DLC for Spider-Man 2. So maybe if we do get Carnage DLC, Eddie could be introduced and bond with the symbiote in the end credits or something. That way we won't need a big introduction in Spider-Man 3. He will already be there. And I think an easy way to introduce him is having him work at the Bugle with JJJ. Maybe Cindy, who worked with Jonah in the comics, is an intern there and befriends Eddie and everything ends up tying together. Who knows? I just think this would be kind of cool to see. And in the end, this could lead to a Venom spinoff game that I know myself and other fans would love. But anyway, there are still two more villains that could appear. Carnage and Doc Ock. But I can't forget the Goblin Nation. The Goblin Nation is a group of goblin themed villains led by Norman Osborn, AKA the Goblin King. In the game, maybe Norman could just break out some inmates who hate Spider-Man from the wrath and have them become the Goblin Nation. This is pretty much what happened in the comics. Also in the comics, which is actually pretty interesting, but the wrath would end up being the home base of the one and only Otto Octavius. So maybe when Otto said, the final chapter, that final chapter is to take over the wrath and with the help of Norman in the Goblin Nation, take down the spider people. It would be similar to the Joker taking over our Arkham Asylum. And it would be a way to see Otto as a villain again. And I know some people immediately thought about Superior Spider-Man when they show Otto in the post credit scene in Spider-Man 2. Well, hello, my name is some people. But as I was planning this video, the Superior Spider-Man storyline might just be too much. We already saw a bad Spider-Man in the second game and how the city started having doubts about him. And in the comics, Otto literally took Peter's body. I think that would mess up the deep storyline with Norman and Peter. Maybe Otto's end goal is to take Peter's body, but he has stopped before he can do so. Miles and Cindy are also up for grabs when it comes to the body swapping thing, but that would be just as weird, so I think they should just leave it out of the game. And plus, the Superior Spider-Man suit is already in the second game, so that kind of rules it out anyway. But back to the Goblin Nation. They could serve as the new enemy tag for the Spider-Man, and like the Arkham games, I think they should really take over the city. In previous Spider-Man games, when the enemies quote-unquote took over, the villains were still happily walking around the street. In Spider-Man 3, I think it should be way more dark, showing the city evolve from happiness to despair, with no civilians in sight when the Goblin Nation takes over. And if we do see a civilian, maybe they will have a different or more nervous walking animation, running in fear, or dead in the street. And I don't want to sound evil here, but I think there should be more depth. Not really for major characters, but for NPCs. We see the Spider-Man in risky situations all the time, but they always end up saving the day. While they definitely have their hardships, we haven't seen the effects of them not saving innocent people. For example, in Spider-Man 2, when Peter was trying to save the people on the roller coaster and couldn't, they were saved by Harry in the last minute. I think this time around, we should see Spider-Man actually fail to save people. This will add so much more stakes to the game, especially if he has a daughter with 
with MJ, it would be freaking wild if Norman tries to get to her. But then there's Albert Moon Jr., Cindy Moon's younger brother. In the video I made about Silk, I mentioned that her brother was missing from the post credit scene in Spider-Man 2. Does he not exist in this universe or is it something else? I believe it's something else. In the comics, Albert actually got caught up with the Goblin Nation and Silk fought against the nation a lot in the comics as well. So this could add more depth to Cindy and her family and it could help the story. Maybe her brother is a part of the Goblin Nation out of hate or fear for the spider people since in the comics he was scared of his sister when she got powers. But maybe we can save him and he can provide info about the nation and any plans that Norman may be up to. But last but not least we got Carnage. Now honestly the only purpose I think Carnage should play in Spider-Man 3 is bonding with Norman. I definitely hope we get Carnage DLC for Spider-Man 2 though. It would be funny if we see Carnage trying to kill Green Goblin but the symbiote leaves Cletus and bonds with Norman resulting in the creation of the Red Goblin. So in the end I think the main battle should be between the spider team and the goblin. No anti-goblin suit, no gimmicks, just hands. I actually found these quotes that can easily be a part of the storyline for the third game. I will destroy your family like you destroyed mine. I will kill everyone you know. It was I who made you who you are today, young man. You and Peter Parker. Therefore, you will respect me, Miles Morales. You will respect your creator. These two quotes by Green Goblin to the Spider-Man pretty much sums up the madness of the Green Goblin that I think we will see in the game. It could truly be a fire story if done correctly. And as far as side quests and side villains, if my theory about a Silk game comes true and we have to fight the Inheritors, maybe certain members can pop up around the city similar to the Taskmaster missions and we have to send them back via portal or something. Now this next section is about a character that I've been wanting for a while and I'm still holding out hope that Insomniac will deliver. That character is Gwen Stacy. Me and many others have said before that we currently don't know who the new police captain is after Yuri Watanabe turned into Wraith. Miles' father Jefferson Davis passed away so that rules him out. So I think the next best person in my opinion would be Captain George Stacy, Gwen Stacy's dad. This would probably be the best way to include her without the multiverse. Will she be Gwen Stacy or Spider Gwen? I'm hoping for Spider Gwen. But one thing I keep forgetting about Spider Gwen is that she has a symbiote of her own. It's a long and crazy story but to make a long story short, in the comic she ends up bonding with an artificial symbiote that granted her powers very similar to Spider-Man. She actually lost her powers as a result of Cindy Moon from another universe depowering her with her power glove. But anyway, maybe she isn't bitten by a spider and isn't even really a spider person, but a venom person, if you will, with her getting powers by bonding with a symbiote. Similar to Harry in Spider-Man 2, and if Eddie Brock is introduced, it will work the same for him, turning him into Venom. In this way, Gwen, or Gwenum, will actually have some unique skills to offer when it comes to gameplay, because without it, it really wouldn't be anything new, making Insomniac's choice of Silk over Gwen understandable. But in the comics, Gwen's suit is made up of symbiote spider creatures that she can control. This could be a fire ability. Call it spider swarm or something and she can make them crawl all over her enemies. Those spiders are actually what give her powers in the comic so maybe we could see that in game. She could change her clothes and suits on the fly so that would be pretty cool to see in gameplay. And similar to Peter's symbiote rage, maybe she can transform into Gwenum when really angry. But I actually believe that she's powerless without the suit so that would be actually interesting to see in game. And everything else regarding her skills would be the same. Wall crawling, swinging, spider sense, etc. I do hope she can still end up with an interdimensional dimensional watch but i won't get into the multiverse stuff here we covered that in silk's video if you want to hear it though and as far as gwen and the role she could play in the story maybe she could work with jjj as well or maybe she could work at oscorp she might have some dirt on norman and oscorp and wants to expose him she could seek someone in the spider team either one of the spider heroes or maybe mary jane since mj has her new podcast maybe she could be a guest on the show and bring oscorp's darkness to the light something like this could cause green goblin to kidnap her which could lead to the night gwen stacy die but in this universe she won't die and actually get saved. Or when she's fallen, she saves herself, revealing she has spider powers of her own. Who knows, man? I said this in the last discussion video, but the possibilities are endless. But hopefully Gwen will be a part of the spider team, and maybe her and Eddie Brock could be a thing in this universe. Then we won't have to worry about the whole Peter X Gwen thing, assuming she's Peter's age. But anyway, say we get all of this, how would the story end? I've seen many people say Peter would die, and while I'm not a fan of that idea, it is a possibility. I definitely think this will be the last time we see an active Peter Parker as Spider-Man. After defeating Green Goblin and any other threats we might see in the game, I could see Peter giving up Spider-Man for good, raising his daughter with MJ and maybe even starting Parker Industries. Maybe in this universe, Parker Industries could be the Emily May Foundation, which he currently still works on. What if he ends up running it? Then there's Miles and Silk. They will be New York's main spider people with the help of Gwen and Eddie Brock's Venom. I really just hope the main and side character throughout all of these games can have a happy ending, bruh. Maybe post-campaign content could play out like Red Dead Redemption, where we play as the son of John Marston after his death. What if we could only play as Miles and Cindy in Mayday? 
day at the end of the game. Obviously, we would need a big time skip, which I think is something that could happen. Because to be honest, after Green Goblin, there shouldn't be any major threats for a while. There are definitely a lot of Spider-Man villains out there, but so many of the major players have already been seen in this universe. But before I end this up, I do want to do a quick wish list of some other things I would love to see added. First up, more suits. Now, this is an obvious one, so I won't talk about it long, but of course, more movie suits, comic suits, and hopefully some suits from other games. Two specific suits I would really want to see are the Ben Riley Sensational suit and the Unlimited suit. My second wish is more heroes in New York. Now, I say this a lot, but after what they said about this game being the end game of the franchise, I actually want to see these characters rather than just Easter eggs. Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, S.H.I.E.L.D., Fantastic Four, Avengers, Black Widow, etc. Maybe even Spinneret. Now, I wouldn't want MJ to get powers, but at this point, after the events of Spider-Man 2, she's a hero as well. Maybe she can keep doing what she always did, but she can just wear a suit like a vigilante or something. But there are so many heroes in New York, so we could see anybody. Hopefully, Wolverine will show up. And don't forget, Doctor Strange and Wong owe us one. And of course, I would love to see Black Cat, Silver Sable, and Wraith return. Now, my third wish is even better traversal. The second game's traversal is phenomenal, but there's still some little things that could make it better. Swinging super low to the street, climbing your webs, slingshots while swinging midair, new animations for both swinging and wall running. The list could go on and on. Same with combat. I won't go over all my ideas, but there are some combat improvements that should be seen in Spider-Man 3. All Father on Twitter has some pretty cool ideas, so go check him out. But with all that, I think I'm finally tapped out, man. Although I know I probably forgot so much, man, and I could talk about this all day. All right, y'all, I just had to hop in and say this real quick, man, before I end this video up. But some unfortunate news just came out, man. An insomniac was actually just hacked and threatened by the hackers, saying they were going to start leaking stuff if they don't get a, a big amount of money. I and mean, it's crazy. They got personal information on employees like, like Yuri, and they already started leaking some stuff, man. There's been an image of Wolverine going out. I'm not going to show it. References to Spider-Man 3 and a Spider-Verse game. Spider-Man 3 we knew was inevitable, but the Spider-Verse game is something that I definitely wanted, but I didn't want it to be, you know, where Reveal like this now nothing is true but i just i just hate this for insomniac bro i hope they can put a stop to this very soon and we can you know move past it but with that being said i was literally already planning a spider-verse video so stay tuned for that but anyway let's get back to the discussion in conclusion, I just want a satisfying end to an amazing franchise. There's so much that can be done, man, and I can't wait to see what Insomniac has cooking up when it comes to Spider-Man and any other Marvel games they may be working on. But now, I'll kick it to y'all. Let me know all your thoughts and ideas down in the comments. The next discussion video will probably be the last regarding this game. We will discuss the possibility of a Spider-Verse game and how that could look developed by Insomniac. But until then, thanks for watching. I hope y'all enjoy. If you did, do me a favor, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, hit the bell so you know when I'm posting, man. Share the content, share the channel, do all of that. I'll see y'all in the next one is your boy Kai SMG. Peace.